Islam is a principle. Islam is a comprehensive system. Islam is a law. You may call it a religion. I don't like to use that word. It's too restricting. When we say religion, a whole lot of things just come up in the mind from all the movies and books and things that we've read, religion. Seems like kind of restriction, like a suit you might wear. Like going into some place like, like it might be to some people, virtual reality. You've heard of that, right? So, like virtual reality, you can pay for, you can go somewhere and develop and have your own religion. But Islam is not like that. No, it's not like that. Islam is a law. Islam is a system. Islam is a legislation. Islam is a regulation. And therefore, it has dimensions by which you can determine and identify it. Now, a Muslim is an individual who makes the profession that they belong to or they are attached to that system. Do you judge a system by the people who say that they are a part of it? No, you don't. And that's why they have what they call disclosures. So that if somebody works for my company and they do something wrong, my company will not be liable. Is that correct? Because I've already made a disclosure that this person does not necessarily represent our company in policy or so forth and so on. I've made a disclosure of that. Well, God has also made a disclosure that the human beings themselves, God is not indicted and God is not imperfect and God does not die and God does not have the limitations and God doesn't make mistakes and God is not immoral and God is not prejudiced. But some Muslims are. So we don't judge or indict a system of life by the people who claim to be that. We would not indict Jesus Christ by what Jim Jones did some years ago. We would not indict Jesus Christ by what Jeffrey Dahmer did. We would not indict Jesus Christ by what Charles Manson did. We would not indict Jesus Christ by the Oklahoma bomber, what was his name? <laughs> Timothy McVeigh. Was he a Christian fundamentalist? We will not indict him. We will not call any of those people Christian fanatics, Christian terrorists. We will not say that the IRA in, in uh, Ireland, that they are Christian fanatics. We don't say that. So how do we say Muslim fanatics? Islamic fundamentalists, Islamic terrorists. How do we indict a global faith of more than 1,500 years with a legislation, with principles, with dignity, with a record? How do we indict that entire faith and all the people who's with that faith and put them in some kind of classification and put on them an oxymoron? You know what that is, don't you? An oxymoron is a word that means just the opposite of what you're putting next to it. Islamic terrorist, Islamic fanatic, those are oxymorons. A person cannot be Islamic by, by definition if they are fanatic. They cannot be. Because Islam is a system of peace, a system of submission and surrender to God, a system of dignity. Now, if somebody who is a Muslim doesn't act that way, if a Muslim acts as a criminal way, what are they? They're a Muslim criminal, is that correct? If a Christian doesn't act the way Jesus Christ spoke, how he lived and his message, if a Christian commits a crime, what are they? A Christian criminal. A Jewish person commits a crime, what are they? A Jewish criminal. A Buddhist, a Hindu, or anyone else that commits a crime, they are what? Criminals, but you don't indict the faith because of the criminal, do you? If that were the case, America, Great Britain, France, Germany, all the so-called advanced nations, they got more criminals wearing suits than all the criminals that are in jail. They would all be criminal governments. 